conclusion inevitable. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. In conclusion. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to In Conclusion, the only movie podcast about Glass Onion, the Funyun Bunyan. I am Dan O'Keefe, and joining me as always is Anna Otto. How are you doing, Anna? I'm okay, Dan. It was kind of a weird day. How are you? Tell me about it. I'm good. Um... I don't want to really go into too much detail. Basically, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, great. That's just, you know, me vibing. Sorry, that doesn't make for good. Pie. I'm just stressed <laughs> at all times. How about you? I'm you good. I, I am not. I'm actually, uh, compared to a month ago, I am much less stressed, which I'm happy about. Oh, much more calm. Love it. Um, very fun. Good. I'm enjoy. I'm I'm loving this for me. Good. I'm loving it for you too. This might be the quickest that we're ever actually getting into the movie that we're talking. I know. About. Look at us. I can. I mean, I can talk about some other stuff. Let's see. No, it's um, fine. I ate a stop. salad for dinner. No, okay. stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess uh, nobody wants to know about my dietary habits. Uh, well, let's see. What do we know about your dietary habits already? Um, they're poor. <laughs> they're poor. This is the second time today I've mentioned my dietary habits with someone because I was talking about foods I don't like with okay. one of my other friends. And, you know, it's a lot. What's, what's your biggest one that normal well, people like? I don't like chicken wings with the bones in because okay. they kind of stress me out. It reminds me that I'm actually eating meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about you? What's your biggest uh, ick that's like a normal thing? Um... I don't like salmon. I don't like oh. real fishy tasting fish. Uh, okay. I don't like shrimp. Shrimp well, kind of gives me weird feelings too. So I feel a lot you of on it's that. texture more yeah. than anything. Like if the, okay. I feel like the texture of a food is wrong, I'm not gonna like it. I don't see anything wrong with this. I support you, Dan. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I support you, King. Stop my ego. <laughs> Uh, the movie that we're talking about today is Glass Onion, released in 2022. Directed, written, and produced by Ryan Johnson, the sequel to Knives Out. Technically, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, the dumbest yeah. name. Just call it Glass Onion. We get it. Yeah. Uh, starring Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., Jessica Henwick, Madeline Klein, Kate Hudson, and Dave Bautista, and featuring Ethan Hawke, Hugh Grant, and the voice of Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And also, in cameos, Stephen Sondheim, Angela Lansbury, Natasha Lyonne, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Yo-Yo Ma, Jake Tapper, and Serena Williams. I forgot, because I watched this for the first time shortly after Stephen Sondheim died, and I think Uh I went, oh, when he came on. This is his living memory. Not any of his musicals? No. Oh, okay. His appearance in this and in Tick, Tick, Boom. I love that for him. Released on Netflix on December 23rd, 2022 in the U.S. It was briefly released in theaters in the U.S. for like three weeks uh, on November 23rd. I don't remember that at all. Hmm. It was only in limited release. It wasn't in theaters long enough. It should have. It would have made much more money than I think it made Netflix on Netflix. With a budget of $40 million, it says that it made $15 million at the box office. Um, As we know, money doesn't matter with streamers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. I don't get it. But on Rotten Tomatoes, 92% approval rating. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Glass Onion brings back Benoit Blanc for another wildly entertaining mystery, rounded out by an outstanding ensemble cast. I agree heartily. Yes. Uh, At the Oscars, it was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay. Okay. It did not win. Do you know what did win? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. This was last year? 
this is the most recent Oscars, yes. What came out last year? I'll tell oh, you. Oh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. That won Best Original Screenplay. Okay. Which I don't think it should have. But what won Best Adapted Ooh. Screenplay? Mm, I don't know. Women Talking. Let me tell Not you, to... I watched that movie, and women be talking. Not to sound anti-feminist, but boring. It's... uh would be much better as a stage play than it was as a movie. I like that idea. Sometimes I feel like like you can't take <sighs> some things are just meant for the stage and that's okay. That's okay. You your audio totally cut out, so I have oh. no idea what point you were making. <laughs> well, it recorded on my end, don't worry. I said some things are just better for the stage and that's okay. <laughs> that's all. That's literally all I said. Whoever the ghost of the internet decided that I was not meant to hear that sentence. The ghost of the internet decided that I was being unfeminist and decided to mute me. <laughs> hey, you know, women, they do be talking. I talk every day, much to the annoyance of a lot of my coworkers. And you are woman. Hear me roar. You can't say that and then not do it. Rar. Okay, thank you. You're welcome so much. <laughs> When was the first time you watched Glass Onion? When, I think January, maybe? When did Steven Sondheim die? Like I said, it was around that time. I don't remember the exact... Steven Sondheim date. died. I can give you the exact date he died. Give it to me. Okay, Steven Sondheim died on November 26th, 2021. Oh, then maybe I watched it... So that was a whole year before this movie came out. Oh my god, everything's blurring together, Dan. <gasps> Oh my god. Then I must have just, you know, it just must have been a permanent pain for me because I definitely <laughs> think I watched it in like January and it still resonated, you know, a year the passing after. of Father of All Musicals. His death will be eternally painful for me, you know? I do, yeah. I mean, Stephen Sondheim, he did write West Side Story. The lyrics for it, at least. I'm literally sick to my stomach right now that that's the musical you referenced. Well, that's the only one of his that I've seen. I'm, th I'm looking through. What? I'm looking through them. Okay. Oh, you weren't in college when we did that one. Okay, never mind. No, I, I haven't seen Gypsy. I haven't seen Company. I haven't seen Sweeney Todd. <gasps> I haven't seen Into the Woods. I haven't seen Sunday in the Park with George. The only thing I know about Assassins is from an episode of Last Podcast on the Left where Henry starts the episode singing, You Wanna Kill a President? Amazing. So, Amazing. That's, that's all, I, all I've seen is West Side Story. And honestly... <laughs> The I, the music is better than the lyrics, and that's Leonard Bernstein. I feel sick to my stomach right now. Um, I'm sorry. Sondheim is everything. He is father. <laughs> I I don't know what to tell you. Normally, the people you look up to are daddy, but he is father. He's father. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, he's full on, like, just... Just father, Dan. I don't even know what to tell you. Like, his music, so many things because of him exist. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, we would not be giving, being blessed with Josh Groban's performance as Sweeney Todd on the Broadway right now. If Sondheim, we would not, Bernadette would have been the muse for another and I can't even <laughs> literally stick to my... I know that I'm saying the first names of these people, and a lot of people are going to be like, who are these people? You did say Give... the full name of Josh Groban, because it's well, impossible Josh to Groban. say just Josh referring to him. Yeah, I can't be like, oh, Josh. You'd be like, who are you talking about? Literally anyone? <laughs> yes. I don't... Uh, uh, yeah, I saw the t Tony performance of Josh oh. Groban as Sweeney Todd. That looks really see, cool. Did you see the behind the scenes where... While His knees are up? Their, Yes, I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I don't. He was born for that role. Sorry, he go is. on. I'm I'm just thinking of other Sondheim stuff. Not, 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 not really pulling me anywhere. We did Company my sophomore year, and it was everything. Was it? Yeah, I was in it. Wow, we did Anything Goes my freshman year, and you were in I that remember. too. You were my dance partner. Yeah, what was your character's name? I'm not saying it on the air because I don't want to get canceled, okay? <laughs> Listen, I was a I priest. didn't choose that. Yeah. So that was offensive to priests. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've talked about this. I'm still shocked at 
uh, whatever the song was when we came out for Act Two, we were singing like mm-hmm. an ode to the oh, ship. Oh God, that none of us song knew sucked. what to sing. I don't. None think of us knew our us, parts. Yeah, I don't think a single person learned the words to that song, and I could not even tell you. Mm-mm. I knew I exactly where to look. I was yep. supposed to look at Jesus while singing, yep. and that was a, about it. Otherwise, I just went up and down as my heart desired. I held my alto line pretty strong. Okay, well, that's because e- it's an alto line. You hold one note, and maybe you go up one or down one. I cannot believe you just said that to me, the queen of all altos in my own mind. Okay, ma'am, am I wrong? No, but it's disrespectful <laughs> when somebody else says it. <laughs> Uh, glass onion. I like this one better than I like Knives Out. Okay. That's. I feel like that's a bold statement. I think I do too. I think I it's like, more... Oh it's more of a traditional more, mystery. Yeah, and there's more of a focus yeah. on Daniel Craig, which is yeah. fun. Yeah, His it gives character more is so of a, fun. Yeah, it's more reminiscent of like an Agatha Christie or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, it, it's just more fun to me. Okay. Yeah. And, and like, I think the, depending on the time of year, I need to be in the right mind space to watch Knives Out because mm-hmm. it's such a fall movie versus this being a summer vacation getaway movie. Absolutely. I can watch this anytime. That's fair. I just feel like, for me personally, having watched this first I wanted Knives Out. Like, I really liked Knives Out, but I wanted it to be more like this in the sense that, you know, it um, was a traditional mystery. Not Mm -hmm. like, okay, we have the answer, but we don't know. Like, oh, there's a twist at the end. It was fine. I mean, I liked the movie, but I like a traditional mystery where I'm trying to figure out who done it the whole time. I was having a great time. Yeah. Um, The first time that I watched this, it was... Christmas Day, I think. Nice. Um, I watched it in Anna's basement. I love that. Christmas Day night or the day after Christmas. Um, We watched it. I could not log into Netflix, so I watched it uh, another way. Definitely legally. I'm not saying anything as not to perjure myself. Good Uh, job, Dan. And it was really fun. I very much enjoyed it. And it's that thought rings true today i'm so glad to hear that yeah it's fun i love the the like whodunits how ketchums yeah that sort of thing. how that's ketchums fun. i don't know why well, that, that made me laugh that's the columbo you know who did it mm-hmm. it's how does columbo figure out they which did is it. like how the first one was yeah sort kind of. of yeah the twist was that she didn't actually do it. Yeah. Versus in Columbo, it's always the person who did... You see the crime happen. And you see mm. the person do it fully. And then it's Columbo or in Poker Face, it's Natasha Leone being like, how'd they do it? Mm. I think those are fun. Okay. You should really watch Poker Face. It's on the cock. I... <laughs> I'm never going to forgive you for that. <laughs> oh, my Lord. You can watch... Below Deck. Amazing. And Poker Face. Okay. Back to back double feature. And then followed up with WrestleMania. All on the cock. Thank you so much, Dan. I will definitely do that. (laughs) On the cock. (laughs) Let's let's get into it. All right. Let's do it to it. Guess what? What, Dan? It's COVID. Yup. (laughs) <laughs> Triggered. And everybody's being invited to a private island. Who is invited to that private island? All of Miles Braun's best friends. The richest and elitist. New York's hottest clubbers. Amen. He invites these characters. Lionel Toussaint, the head scientist at Alpha. Mm-hmm. Claire DeBella, the governor mm-hmm. of Connecticut. Amazing. Birdie J, fashion designer. Me. Meninist streamer Duke Cody. Okay, pause right there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love Dave Batista. Uh-huh. I don't know if you knew this about me. I can't remember. Then do I have a pay-per-view that you should watch? It's called I, WrestleMania. I knew you were going to tell me some wrestling stuff. I think he's hilarious. He's super um, funny. And I loved him in this role. But anyway, we can talk more about that later. I loved him in this role. Um, and then also Alpha co-founder and ousted ex-CEO Cassandra, in quotes, Andy Brand. Mm-hmm. In order to open this invitation, they all have to solve puzzles that are held within this mystery puzzle box. And they all have to really think it out, really work it out, figure out what to do, how to get into it. Finally, they solve the puzzles. They get invited. Dan, I would never make uh, it to the party. To this private island. I'm horrible Um, at puzzles. I would not make it. You could take the other path that we learn halfway through. That's true. I would definitely take that path. (laughs) The path that you're referencing. (laughs) Um, also invited on this private island also we meet everybody they meet up on this dock um, where they get sprayed with mouse mouth spray that cures them of COVID basically which I think might just be Evian um, <gasps> not Evian <but laughs> the poorest could never the, afford it the person greeting them on the dock uh, who I guess is Edward Norton Miles Braun's assistant <laughs> Is Ethan Hawke. This movie had way more celebrities in it than it had any right to. It had a ton. Well, I think it's because everybody liked Knives Out. And everybody was like, yeah, I'll cameo in it. Yeah, everybody was like, get me in there, coach. Put me in. Yo, yo, ma. And it's also a a commentary on all these people who are like the things that they are presenting out into the world and telling other people to do, and then they're just partying with the super rich and famous. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I love Yo-Yo Ma. Always have. Always okay. will. That's all sure. I have to say about that. What do you mean, That's sure? It? Yeah. That's not a confession. I know. I'm just stating a fact. The, okay. <laughs> I don't know what, what you're confused about. <laughs> it's not a fact that you need to state most people have a i assume a relatively high opinion of yo-yo ma i love him so much one time (laughs) what tell me the story in high school i dated a gentleman who was a cellist and he also happened to be an asian gentleman and we broke up and we were doing a project where we had to invite celebrities to a table in our spanish class and talk about why we'd invite them and where we'd seat them and stuff and i said in front of the class oh no i would invite yo-yo ma he he, my boyfriend my ex-boyfriend was in the class i said to him Mm -hmm. and another girl i worked on the project with she agreed to this i said no, no. Okay, before I say this, let it be known that the guy I was dating at the time, like, we were friends. Like, we stayed friends after this and before this, but we had kind of an ugly moment when we were not with each other for a while where he was really depressed because I dumped him in the middle of the musical, but it's fine. <laughs> There's so much preamble. It's high school drama, okay? I told the class that I invited Yo-Yo Ma because I wanted my ex-boyfriend to know he wasn't special and he was replaceable. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Not a fine That's moment, evil. okay? Not a fine moment That's online. so evil! We are fine. We were friends. He wasn't always nice to me either, okay? We are better as friends. <laughs> <laughs> I invited the better version of you? Jesus Period. Christ! Period. I did. I did. Okay. He told me, when we finally broke up, he told me he was breaking up with me because I was white. So let's take a moment to think about that. Why won't people think about white I broke up with him. I broke up with him the first time because he was a bad kisser. So, I mean, how mature (laughs) was this relationship really, Dan? (laughs) This is... I love this. Peak high school? It's peak high school. This is peak high school. You've done it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We stayed for... Actually, in college a couple times, um, he... Hooked up with him. No, 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 no. He went to Marquette for his um, master's. Oh. And so while you were still in college? Yeah, while I was finishing my victory lap. And he texted me once. (laughs) He's like, hey, I'm on campus. Like, let's meet up. And I was like, okay. And I told my boyfriend at the time, whose name we will not mention, (laughs) that I was going to go hang out with this guy 
that I was friends with in college and I, or in high school. I dated, blah, blah, blah. So he knew. And I was sitting there, like, having coffee with him, talking. We were talking about, like, his girlfriend and what he was doing and, you know, all this crazy stuff. And somebody from the theater department saw me with him and stood behind him out of his eyesight and gestured to him and mouthed, who is this? Who are you with? Why are you with a man? <laughs> and I verbally was like, this is my friend so-and-so from high school. We're just having coffee. Like, it's not serious. <laughs> so anyway, that's the story of how I was a bitch in high school, but we stayed friends afterwards. <laughs> Wait, okay, I need to ask some more clarifying questions about okay. that interaction in college. Yes. What person would see you just out with someone and be like, this is something. They this, assumed this I was needs, cheating. Must be stopped. Yeah, cheating in at the Starbucks at a, on campus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like when you don't try. <laughs> like, oh my! Gosh. I guess you know people thought that number one, I was a cheater, disrespectful. <laughs> ouch! And number two, that I would cheat very publicly. Ouch again. <laughs> nope, just coffee with with an old friend. But thank you so much, actually. Thank you so much. Oh, boy. Okay, Glass mm -hmm. Onion. Yeah, um, back to Glass Onion. Miles Braun is questioning why Benoit Blanc is there. Does the name Benoit Blanc make you want a glass of wine, or is that just me? It makes me want a mint julep. Ooh. Somebody Benoit crack Ball. a window. This oh. flower is melting. I can't think of what I'm trying to say right now. The flower's wilting? Yes, thank you. I accidentally said melting. <laughs> Mr. Beauregard, tear down these pants. Oh. Oh, Mr. Oh. Gorbachev. Is it just going to be us going, oh, oh, for an hour? <laughs> oh, a glass onion. I do declare. I do declare, Mr. Gorbachev, mm -hmm. tear down this wall. Mm. Um, because Benoit's not invited, but he lets him stay, and they think, oh, we invited the most famous detective in the world to solve this murder mystery puzzle. Blah, 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 blah. Things are gonna be great. Um, Benoit... Is that not how you accept, um, you know, invites? Is that not how you invite people to your events? I invite the best in the world at their, in their field? Yeah. Is that I not do. why you invited me to your wedding? Because I'm the best at marrying people. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best at standing to the side while other people get married. Darn tootin'. According to all the weddings that I'm standing in this year, that is the truth. <laughs> Isn't that just the plot of 27 Dresses? Yeah, and I literally feel like I'm trapped in its plot line You're every engaged. single day of my life. Yeah, I'm at the part where I get to marry Chris Pine, except I'm still in 27 of the dresses, <laughs> you know? That doesn't. Those two don't overlap, though. I'm wearing all 27 of the dresses. You better wear all 27 of the dresses to my wedding. I, I will. They're gonna be like, "Why doesn't Anna fit through any doors?" Well, she has 27 dresses on. <laughs> She's so wide. She is wide. Thank you so much. Uh, anyway, Blanc overhears Peg and Miles getting into a fight about a PR statement that he wants Birdie to release. Um. And then he also watches Dave Batista get cucked by his girlfriend with Miles. Like all Mennonists want. I want that, you know, you as a as a Mennonist. As a Mennonist, you want to be cucked. Every day of my life. Hey, everyone. I'm in a silly, goofy mood tonight. Subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> Help Anna just kidding. get cocked. Just kidding. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in a silly, goofy mood, you know? I know. Um, so, back to the cucking. Um, I love this movie. There are a couple other people on the island, including Miles' friend, who's just staying there because he's going through some things. Mm -hmm. but, the whole plot of this movie is that everybody has trauma and problems. <laughs> Yeah, and he's the only one dealing with it the right way. Just kind of chilling on a rich Mediterranean island. Dan, wouldn't it be nice if we all had our own Mediterranean islands and we could invite our Mennonist friends to come hang out and, like, you know, that's literally hate on women? 
Th- that's the platonic ideal of life. That's literally my only goal. I hope a meninist <laughs> doesn't hear this and think I'm serious about I any of this. I hope they do. Hi, I this is dripping do. with sarcasm. I hope have you know. You, have you recently I came across or aware of the existence of a trad wife podcaster named Pearl? I only know about the the movie. Pearl? You know. She, no, trad wife? No, Pearl the movie, about? the sequel to, to X. What are you talking about? Pearl? What is I'm X? a star! It's a, a horror movie about porn. Oh, am I, is am Mia I Goth high? in that yeah, one? Yeah, I thought for a second that I was having... I've seen the I'm a, a star dream. clip. Yeah, no. that's Pearl. That can't be her real name. Mm-hmm. Mia Goth? Oh, I thought you were talking about this Pearl person. It's too fitting. It's kind of a no, cool I'm name, past though, right? Pearl now. It's a very cool name. It's too fitting, though. I don't know. Let me let me give it a goog. That'd be like Sylvester Stallone being named Boxer Muscles. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something with muscles. Okay, Mia Goth. Her real name, Mia Gypsy Mello Da Silva Goth. That's not... It can't be it. That it is her birth it, name. It can't, it can't get cooler. Oh my gosh, she's married to Shia LaBeouf? Whoa, mm. I didn't know that. And they have a kid together? Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, I thought I don't she was know. like 21. Uh, she's 29. She's older than both of us. <gasps> yeah, no, her name is Mia Gypsy Mellow Da Silva Goth LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced LaBeau. Oh, Le Beauf. Le Beauf. Anyway, uh, at the dinner on the Glass Onion Island, uh, mm-hmm. Miles shows off that he got the Mona Lisa. It's on loan from the Louvre. I, I'm sure that's not going to come into play later. Not at all, actually. Um, and then also that this Glass Onion is powered by a hydrogen-based alternative fuel named Clear that, that will launch like this week that apparently has some safety concerns that both the engineer and the governor of Connecticut are worried about. I but don't even know. There's a fake murder mystery planned on the island, uh, and the moment that it starts, Blanc rips it apart immediately. I mean, I did kind of love that, because I didn't even, like... He said it all so fast, and I was like, wow, I wish I was that able to deduce that fast. I love it because he he rips through it, and then he just goes, this is fun. Yeah. He reminds me of Foghorn Leghorn a little bit. Yes. I, I think that's honestly his character inspiration. I love that idea. I think that more people need to be inspired by animated chickens i am always inspired by chickens in any form for the record is that why is foghorn leghorn the reason why you can't eat bone-in chicken wings no um it's just because i don't no okay i should go back to what i said before okay i don't like the skin either on chicken okay. wings like it you um i don't really know what to say about that so just oh you know. for two on the the chicken just, wing world listen, chicken wings need to to just <laughs> just take a walk and be replaced by regular old chicken, chicken breast that's been baked with no skin I sound like such a skinny almond mom right now. I just no don't like chicken No oil, wings. no salt. You actually cook it in your tears? No seasonings. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, I hate to eat that meal. Whenever people tell me that they eat, like, baked chicken with steamed broccoli and they meal prep that for the week and brown rice. Uh-huh. I think to myself, if that's what it takes to be, like, fit and skinny. Not worth it. I would hate that. 
No, I like food. I like the taste of food. I like taste. Yeah. I want to enjoy eating. Like, I don't even know what to say. That's, I just like food, you know? Everyone, Annie gets upset. Uh, She leaves the main party room after a fight. And then as they're all drinking and partying around, uh, Duke collapses and dies. Mood. He drank from Miles' glass. And now Miles has killed his ass. I will be so honest with you. I get really upset because when I watch things, the characters that I like always die. <laughs> sure, yeah. And Them, that's probably on purpose. No, but like, he was so funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A nightmare. Uh, that's your nightmare? That your Meninist podcaster dies? <laughs> Yup, you know me. <laughs> Go men. <laughs> um, the group then discover that Duke's pistol is missing, and then the power goes out. Everyone splits up. Nothing scarier than when the power goes out. Nothing's better when the power goes out and there's a mystery afoot and someone has just died than everyone splitting up to solve the mystery. Immediately pooping my pants. That's always the best decision. Yup, um, I've seen Scooby-Doo. So then... Benoit finds Andy, uh, and just as he finds her, she gets shot. That part had me yelling. I'm not going to lie. I screamed big time. And and then he gathers up the group and says that he solved her murder almost immediately. But then we cut to a flashback. A real long flashback. Andy is dead. (gasps) Not just in the current time, but also in the past. Shook, gasping, pearls clutched. Her identical twin sister, Helen, who solved the puzzle box by breaking it open with a hammer. Iconic queen. Women supporting women. Mm -hmm. Um, She hires Blanc to investigate the death. We're also introduced to Benoit's partner, played by kinky bitch Hugh Grant. I I didn't like that at all. (laughs) Look at any red carpet interview with him. He always ends up talking about some really weird, kinky sex stuff. He's kind of a whore. Like, yeah. more power to him, but he's kind of a whore. He's more than kind of a whore. Whore. He's whore, a whore. Whore, <laughs> whore Grant. No shade. Oh, not whore Grant. No. Mood, oh, honestly. Hell yeah. Um, so, at Alpha, Andy was CEO and she stopped development of clear because she was worried it was unsafe and going to burn the environment down, blah, whatever, you know, actual safety concerns. But that's no Boo. fun. Safety. Boo. So Miles had her removed as CEO. Um, and this was only supported by all of their friends perjuring themselves um, by saying that he had single-handedly sketched out his plan for Alpha on a napkin years ago. We see a flashback to all of them at a bar. Edward Norton looking pretentious as fuck it's great amazing um but the original napkin was written by andy she emailed photo evidence to the group y'all are fucked bad call bad call andy you don't send the evidence to the people who want to uh, do you wrong yeah you send it to your lawyers it's like she's never ever in her life watched a true crime documentary you know the fool the fool it's the same thing you never tell people you have a dash cam no you You wait until think about it you wait until they lie and then you tell them that i was thinking about getting a dash cam but i haven't gotten it yet but if i had one oh you would have been in trouble you'd be screwed Um, have you did you ever watch the jinx documentary i didn't anna did so i saw i watched parts of it did you see the part where the guy like says something about the crime and then he goes in the bathroom and he like admits that he was the murderer yes i did see that part that's incredible that's what i was thinking of just now what did you do what did i do i killed them all of course slams the bathroom door open (laughs) runs in um but then helen thinks that someone in the group killed andy to avoid being discredited to make sure that miles still loves them um And since the news of the death isn't public yet, uh, they propose that she pretend to be Andy at Miles' party to help him investigate. There's some weird CGI background stuff going on with the conversation between Daniel Craig 
and Janelle Monet when they're on the balcony. It's not the best. Really? I didn't even notice. It look it looks like they're in like a painting of what people think the world will look like from the 1920s thinking that the world will look like in 2020. That's funny as like hell. Like weird like sepia sky Gatsby background thing. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Uh, so Helen finds motives for each member in the group and why they want to protect Miles. Uh, Lionel, the scientist, and Claire, the governor, have already staked their reputations on Clear. Lionel by developing it, Claire by signing a deal for Connecticut to do. As you know, as goes Connecticut, so goes the nation. Yup. My brother lives in Connecticut. I knew that. I told someone that. I think I accidentally said you Vermont, told though. told someone that my brother lives in? That's why. No, it was because of um, at the bridal shower. <laughs> Okay. That I was makes like, a lot Dan's family lives on the East Coast. I think it's Vermont. I was wrong. <laughs> my brother and his wife are the only ones in my family who live in Connecticut. Otherwise, uh, my dad and a lot of his family is from New Jersey. That I knew. I knew that too. See, I'm on top of things. I'm just not always perfect. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> New Jersey and Vermont are very different places. Sorry to those from New Jersey and Vermont. They seem similar. I think you should more just apologize to the people of Vermont than anything. Sorry to Vermont and your maple <laughs> syrup and your Ben and Jerry's. Hell yeah, stereotypes. Um, I will continue to stereotype. Miles, he's financially saving Birdie from employing child labor uh, with probably the funniest part of the oh, movie. Oh, God. Going through her emails where one of the emails reads that they're running a sweatshop and <laughs> she goes sounds good thumbs up Dying. she thought that a sweatshop was where you made sweats oh my god that part had me dying because that's true how many people in this world do you think don't realize right like are so out of touch did, did i can they see learn someone nothing? did they not learn about the triangle shirtwaist factory fire oh triggered that should be a musical honestly so you want to kill a garment worker. I love it, Dan. You sound amazing. <laughs> it's from the perspective of the factory owner. It's from the perspective of a piece of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I can't wait to be made into pants. Me. Ah! 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 <laughs> oh, God. The end. That's the whole show. <laughs> uh, and then... Duke is using whiskey and cucking himself to get a role at Alpha News, the news network that he runs. Tisk, tisk, at his own network. <laughs> uh, all of the other guests visited Andy at her home when she died. Uh, and Helen disrupted the party so she can search their rooms for the napkin. Um, but she doesn't find it. But she gets shot. The journal in her jacket pocket stops the bullet so she doesn't die. Amazing. Amazing. I feel like that's happened in real life. Teddy Roosevelt. Thank you. I was like, who is it? Because his thick speech, right? Yeah, he had a dummy thick speech. That's what it was. So I was like, it didn't somebody get stopped. out here. It didn't get totally stopped. Like, the bullet didn't totally get stopped yeah, he by got, like, speech. nicked, right? Yeah. Tis but a flesh he was, wound. He was able to give his speech for another 45 minutes or something. God. God dang it. <laughs> Nothing but respect for the original Meninist podcaster, Please. Teddy Roosevelt. Please, no. <laughs> no. Uh, but Benoit tells him that she was killed, so he has the opportunity to finish her search of Miles' office. Mm -hmm. But then Benoit reveals his deduction. He was responsible for both murders. <gasps> he killed Andy after learning she had the napkin, Mm -hmm. But then Duke saw Miles' car leaving the house, so he had to poison him to exploit his pineapple allergy and then take his pistol to shoot Helen. There's a lot to unpack here, honestly. But then Andy finds the napkin in Miles' office. There is a lot to unpack. They mm -hmm. go through it, and they do, like, reshots of people remembering things differently, which is cool. Uh, yeah, I did enjoy that very much. And that's an old trick. Yeah? 
that's an, back in the days of uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein. They were doing <gasps> that on Broadway. Amazing. I love it. What do you we call love- it when a when a German dude just knocks back like six beers? A Tuesday? Hammerstein. That's good oh. too. <laughs> I I don't even know what to say right now. Uh Helen finds the the napkin, reveals who she is. Uh mm-hmm. but then he burns the napkin. No mm-hmm. more evidence. He's out free and clear. Except there are a bunch of glass sculptures that Miles has had around, um, which destroys, destroying them. They're all like, yeah, take out your anger, blah, blah, blah. None of this means anything. We're all super rich. You're not destroying anything of real importance. That's how Uh, I handle my everything. And then they throw clear into a bonfire that's lit, which makes the mansion explode, destroys the glass onion. Uh, and exposes the Mona Lisa to the fire. Poor Mona. They destroyed the Mona Lisa. They all decide they're going to testify against Miles, and then Helen and Benoit watch the police boats arrive. Boring on, boats against the current, borne ceaselessly into the past. That is Glass Onion. Amazing. I enjoyed it. I did too. I thought it was very fun. I think it is the kind of movie that they don't make anymore. Oh my god, Dan. <laughs> but okay, I will say there movies like this used to be much more consistently made. And part of the reason yeah. that Glass Onion stands out in the way that it does is because it is a top shelf example of what these movies can be and have stopped being. Yeah, I mean, this movie was just like, yes, it was a commentary on things, but it also just was generally like a good, fun movie, too, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, And Daniel Craig was great. Everybody was great. Everybody played their roles great. Yeah. Edward Norton is a jackass. I can believe it. I loved it. I thought that everybody was great in their roles. I found it to be an enjoyable movie. Yes, I agree. One hundo percent. Mm-hmm. As the kids say, I'm looking through my rankings. I had Glass Onion as my sixth favorite movie of the year last year. Mm. You can guess what number one is. Everything, everywhere. No. Oh, no, that was nine. I don't know what was number. One? Are you gonna say Women Talking? No. Oh, Tar. Oh, I forgot. I blocked Come it out. Come on. I full on blocked it out of my nose. Or my nose, my brain. Your nose? <laughs> <laughs> I misspoke. Um, no, uh, my, my top five above Glass Onion. Five was See How They Run with Sam Rockwell and Sorsha Ronan, which is basically an adaptation of The Mousetrap. The Agatha Christie play. Uh, yes. Number four was Banshees of Inishirin. Oh, God. Number three was The Fablemans, the Steven Spielberg movie. I couldn't even get behind that name, Banshees. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> number two was Avatar The Way of Water, and number one was Tar. Don't come at me. I love Avatar. It's great. Yep. I'll never talk about it on the podcast because I don't want to watch it outside of a theater. That's fair. Thank you so much for, for doing I'm that. I'm sparing you, honestly. Thank you. I really appreciate your kindness in this trying time. <laughs> uh, do you want to hear some trivia? Absolutely, I do. The reason that the movie is set on a Greek island, mm-hmm. it's because that's where Ryan Johnson fantasized about going during COVID lockdowns. That's such a fucking mood. He's living his truth. If I was doing this, the movie would be filmed in Disney World. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> That's really embarrassing, honestly. I was desperate. I was so depressed, you should, Dan. You should keep that thought to yourself. I wish I could. <laughs> uh, the reason that this was released on Netflix instead of in theaters is because in 2020, Netflix bought the sequel rights for two sequels to Knives Out mm-hmm. for $469 million. Amazing. That's so much money. Um, 
Ryan Johnson doesn't like that a Knives Out mystery subtitle has been added. He wish I mean, of anyone he he wishes it was a Benoit Blanc mystery. I get it. I mean, you know, I get it. <laughs> the, uh, it would be more iconic if it was like, oh, the Benoit Blanc series, but unfortunately, he didn't get that uh name recog yeah he doesn't get that pleasure um birdie is a very waspy blonde who gets dragged online for using an anti-semitic slur Mm -hmm. played by the jewish kate hudson wonderful iconic uh dave batista is actually incredibly vocally anti alt right i know that's why i love him partially yeah um, he's also like he, well i mean that's the same thing but he's like spoken up like gay rights and stuff yeah and he's icon. the the son of a lesbian mother iconic incredible icon. lived truth i love him he's so funny <sighs> Uh, Angela Lansbury died a couple of weeks before the premiere of the movie. That's who it must have been. Yes. Oh, poor Angela. I know you were deep into your Murder, She Wrote. I My dad much. loves Murder, She Wrote. Really? Yes. I have never seen it. I've probably <gasps> seen two minutes of it, maybe. I think you'd like it. Probably. The, I think you would. Burning of the Mona Lisa um, it, that is shot in the movie. Mm-hmm. There is a law that if a reproduction of a famous painting is commissioned for and used during a film shoot, mm-hmm. it is required to be burnt to a cinder after the shoot. Oh, so it has no chance of entering the black market. But so it worked out perfectly. <laughs> they just burnt it actually instead of using CGI, which was I a lot love easier. That. Good job, everyone. Very useful and resourceful, huh? Yeah, right? Yeah, I love uh, that. Joseph Gordon Levin plays the voice of the hourly dong. I love that too. I love Joseph Gordon Levin. I had a fat crush on him when I was in high school, back to my high school days. I have a fat crush on him now. I mean, yeah, that's very fair. Ryan Johnson had considered giving Benoit Blanc a different accent in each movie. I don't like that at all. (laughs) He decided against it, probably for the better. Thank God, because that ain't it. Um, Duke was originally supposed to be a scrawny wannabe tough guy, Mm -hmm. but then Dave Bautista auditioned and they rewrote it. It's funnier that Dave Bautista is so big, because he's a Uh, full-on himbo. Right. Helen was supposed to be basically the same as Andy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Bill Hader suggested that the that she be more sympathetic if she was n- nothing like the disruptors, who was instead was a teacher who was totally mm-hmm. out of her element at a billionaire's party. Good, b- good for Bill. I love Bill Hader. Big fan I do of too. his work. Big crush on him. I would like to roll with a crew of problematic bachelors that calls themselves the Squad. <laughs> He's so, like, he's definitely the definition of sexy because he's funny. (laughs) I think he's sexy because he's sexy. I mean, yeah. He's tall. Yeah, tall doesn't always do it for me. You know that. That's true. Look at me. Yeah. Um. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Because I got the tall part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was confused. I was like, why? Dan, we've been over this. I don't remember who I was talking to, but I was telling someone that I was joking that I was like, yeah, man, everybody thinks I'm I'm super attractive until they meet me or until they know me. I and I was that. telling about how everyone at the Marquette Theater Department had a crush on me until I started talking to them. And they're like, oh, no. I feel like that's, that's your, enough. your proudest story some for some reason. You cut out, so I want to hear you say it again. I said I feel like that's your proudest story for some reason. It is. It is. Because I'm like, ooh. Ooh. People people don't like me because of my personality. 
they like me because of my looks so much that my personality only drags it down a little bit. Damn. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about you right now. <laughs> uh, would this movie be better or worse than the same with Jonathan Taylor Thomas as... Uh, oh my gosh. I just remembered something I wanted to tell you and I completely forgot. Okay. It has to do with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh. So I was at the morning blend this week for work. Okay. And the person that was being interviewed was my boss, and he was super nervous. Yeah. And we're sitting in the lobby waiting, and I look up on one of the TVs, and they were playing Home Improvement. And I said, oh my gosh, look, it's a positive sign. They're playing Home Improvement. That's my favorite (laughs) comfort show. And he was like, okay. (laughs) So I just wanted to share that with you. It was a sign from the universe that you were good. Yeah. I was like, guys, this is it. We're good to go, my dudes. I'm I'm so happy for you. It I'm happy that really it worked out that way. A magical experience. Um. Anyway, better or worse than the same with JTT as uh, I I don't know actually. There's not really a character that he would fit in with as I, much. He uh, could do uh, the dongs. Leslie I guess. Odom Jr. I guess the scientist character. No. I love Leslie too much. I just don't think there's a place for him for this one, unfortunately. I think we're just going to have to nix him. (laughs) I think that, um... I'm having such a... Oh my god, what's wrong with me tonight? What is the name of the person you like? Jimmy Stewart? (laughs) Yes! I'm fighting for my life. <laughs> uh, I want him to be the eccentric billionaire. Okay. What do you think? I could see it. Yeah, like a young Jimmy Stewart. Like a mm-hmm. uh, It's a Wonderful Life era Jimmy Stewart. I love that. I could see it. I think that would be fun. I think it'd be. I think, so. I think it'd be better. Edward Norton's very good, but... I like the would, idea that, would work. that he's like an old, rich... You know? Yeah. I'll I'll pay you one billion dollars to tell me which one of them tried to kill me. I love that. I love that. Let me tell you a little secret. Your worldview, it's going to change. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. Is your phone turned off? I think... On a scale of one to five Meninist podcasts, what do you give it? Um... I give it four and a half because I really liked it. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. How about you? I give it a four. Okay. Those are high ratings from us. Yes. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Yeah. It's a good one, right? It is. Now, Anna, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Or I have an answer for you. (laughs) (laughs) It's 10 uh, p.m. for me. It's my bedtime. I know. It's late. We didn't discuss what we we're talking about next. No, but I yet. picked these two, so you can pick next. I'm scared, though. Well, I recently watched What's Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, dear Lord, baby Jesus. Uh-huh, go on. And I thought it was great. And I've seen that movie a hundred times. I'm really glad that you thought that. But I don't want to force that upon you yet. So, I'm holding off on saying Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but I do want to watch two movies from the 50s that are about media and about making media. Movies about movies. All about Eve and Sunset Boulevard. Okay. Oh, Gage likes Sunset Boulevard. You'll like both of these. They're both very entertaining. Sunset Boulevard's a musical, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, Gage likes the, The musical is. The movie is not. Oh, poop. Okay, well, I really was hoping, but okay. Let's Uh, do it. Let's do it. We'll be back next week with Sunset Boulevard. I look forward to it. That's what we're starting with. Uh, But that's it for this week's episode of In Conclusion. If you want to find us. Oh, sorry. Which one do you think is better? We both, we already talked about this. Oh, Glass Onion. Glass Onion. I preferred it. Big time preferred it. I agree. Uh, We'll be back next week with... Sunset Boulevard. If you want to find us, we're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, at and in conclusion, Instagram at in conclusion podcast. Uh, 
we're on Patreon at patreon.com slash in conclusion. You can find me on Twitter at Dan O'Keefe86 and on TikTok at not Dan O'Keefe. Anna, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Anonymous Prime 818 or you can find me on Twitter at Autobots Roll Out, Capital O for Auto, Capital B for Bots, Capital R for Roll and the O in Roll and the O in Out are zeros. Also, please follow my dog on Instagram, Jester the Pup 1017. I really want her to pay like a single check, you know, or cut a single <laughs> check. Yeah. That would be really nice. If that, if you can get that, that's a good deal. I would be so freaking happy, Dan literally just the happiest girl in the world let anna's dreams come true we'll be back next week in the meantime everybody stay safe and have fun bye 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 my coworkers found out i had a podcast and they listened to an episode and they were like that's wild and then they stopped Creative Land Podcast.